this video we're going to use some trigonometry to construct a ring cutter. So here's the information given. A ring cutter is to be constructed of alum aluminum sheets 12 inches wide. After marking off a length of 4 inches on each side or edge, this length is spent up in an angle theta. The area A of the opening is a function of theta is given by this function here. A of theta equals to 16 sine theta parentheses cosine theta plus 1 where the angle theta is larger than 0 degrees and less than 90 degrees. So what we want to do is find the angle theta that maximizes the area A and then find the actual maximum. Now they give you this function here and it's obtained by looking at this diagram right here. So the actual gutter I look at the front, I have the sheet flat, this would be the front edge then. That's bent up a certain angle here, theta. So the actual gutter, I'll go ahead and trace it, it's going to be this right here. So this is the area that you want to maximize, this opening right here. Again, this is, the, this is a front end here, and this side is measured 4 inches on each side, and then you bent this up to form the, the gutter. Now the only thing, the only thing that's fixed, then based on what we're doing here, this is still going to be 4 inches, this side here, going from here to here, that's, that's still going to be 4 inches. Same thing on the other side. This length right here is still going to be 4 inches. Now this side here, before you bent it, that's 12 inches. That's the width of the uh, aluminum sheet. But as you measure this out and then bent this side, obviously this is this side right here is going to get smaller. So it's not going to be fixed. Now this right here is going to be fixed. That's going to be 4 inches. So we were to ro rotate this side 90 degrees and the other side 90 degrees. And we're looking at this opening right here. It would be either a square or a rectangle. Because again, we don't know this side here, this this length here. Because that's going to change as this is bent up. But let's say it's uh, 4 or 5. Let's say it's, uh, this is 5 inches. And 4 times 5 is 20 square inches, just to get an, an idea of what we have square inches. So what they did to get that formula, and I thought I might do that in another video if I get somebody that uh, wants to know. Basically what they're doing is they're finding this area of this square, or uh, triangle rather, here. Which is going to be the same as this one here, based on the symmetry here. And then the area of this square, and they add them up, and they get the function. So you might want to try that to see if you can get that uh, function that's given. Uh, if not, leave a comment, and I'll show you how uh, they got the formula. But for right now, all we have to do, since it's, since they give us the function, is find the angle. So just to remind you again, if you have a parabola that opens this way, this could be some kind of quadratic model. This point right here, the vertex, is at HK. So this could be a profit function. So we go H units, and then you can see that the Y value is actually the maximum. So if this were a profit function, and I wanted to find maximum profit, I would find this vertex point here, and then I would simply say that the the maximum profit, or just the maximum, depending on what you're dealing with, is found when X is equal to H, and then the Y value in this case k, would be the maximum profit. Now if it turns out, if it turns out that the parabola opens this way, say we want to minimize some mathematical model, maybe this is a, a cost function, and the vertex is also, in this case, I'll label it, label it hk. Then all I have to do is find that vertex, and I could say that the 
minimum cost occurs when x is equal to h, and the actual minimum cost is given by k. So minimum, co minimum cost would be k, and it occurs when x is equal to h, h units, whatever that, whatever that is. You could be dealing with a profit function, function involving uh, cars or other items, but that's what we do. In our case, we want to find maximum area, so we're given an area function. Now, we can't do it using calculus. But at this point, we'll go ahead and use the calculator. And since we're given the angle in degrees here, I want to check uh, the mode here. And this is uh, set to degrees, so we're OK there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this function right here. I'm going to go. Now, I've already entered it just to save some time. There it is, 16. And now, just to make it easier, I'm using x here, but that, that x is the same thing as the theta. It's just a variable. So 16 sine of x times parentheses cosine of x plus 1. And what I did here, I went to the window. And remember, the conditions are that the angle, we want the angle between 0 and 90. Somewhere in there is where I'm going to get the maximum value. So that's between 0 and 90. And then the y value, as we saw in the uh, earlier, when I was looking at what happens if the angle is 90 degrees, it kind of forms a rectangle. So that area could be somewhere around 20, give or take a few values. So I set it to from 0 to 25. And then I'm just going to graph this. So that's the graph. So from 0 and then 90 somewhere over here. So this looks like a parabola that opens downward. So the maximum value occurs somewhere up there. That could be, say, a form of the vertex. So here's what we do in the calculator. I want to go to the calculate menu, so I hit second and then hit the trace key. That's giving me calculate menu. And here we have several items we can pick from, depending on what you want to what you want to find or do. I want to maximize, so I hit four. So notice left bound. So I mean, I want to move that cursor. So hit the arrow key here, just to the left of that high point, because I know that's where the maximum will occur. So I go a little bit closer to it. Don't have to get too close to it. I'll just hit enter. Now it went to right bound. So I go past that high point there. Call it a vertex if you want. I just go past it. Okay, and then hit enter. Now it wants to guess. You can ignore that and just hit enter. So here it tells me maximum x equals 60. Remember this is 10 degrees. So it's 60.0000 and so on. We can just call that. 60 degrees. So the angle that'll maximize the area is 60 degrees. Now, find the maximum area. Okay, to find the maximum area, one way you could do it, it's given there in the calculator, but another way you could do it is just plug in 60 degrees in for theta. So you could have 16 sine theta 60 degrees times cosine 60 degrees plus 1, close coincidence. You can work that out in your calculator, but it's given right here. The maximum value actually occurs at x equal to 60 degrees, so that's the answer to part b. In the second component, remember the vertex? Yeah, just like I when I did the parabola, hk. In this case, the x is, or the h is 60, and the maximum is the second value. So this is Maximum area is 20 point, and we'll run that out to two places, 78. And that's square inches. The key, of course, was to get this formula. And they gave it to us in this particular problem. But see if you can get that using some uh, finding the area of those triangles I pointed out and the, uh, and the square adding them up, and you should wind up with this. Uh, post any comments, or if you want to see that particular 
four minutes in a minute in another video. Let me know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.